Hello, welcome everybody. So we are continuing our fourth module. Okay, so we are in our kinematics of curvilinear motion. In the last class we saw when a subject, when an object is subjected to curvilinear motion, how to represent its kinematics. That is we can represent the kinematics of curvilinear motion of an object in three different coordinates that is first one is the rectangular or Cartesian coordinates that is if v is the velocity we can resolve it into x and y components that is v cos theta and v sin theta. Now second one is we can resolve it as normal and tangential coordinates. So tangential coordinate is math along the path and the normal coordinate is uh, described perpendicular to the tangential coordinate. And the third way of representing the curvilinear motion is by using polar coordinates. That is a radial distance with respect to the radial distance and angular displacement. So these things and an example that is the projectile motion, an example for curvilinear motion is the projectile or trajectory motion. So these things we saw in the last class and in this class we are going to solve a few problem how to describe the kinematics of curvilinear motion in different coordinates and how to determine the velocity and acceleration that is what we are going to see in this class. So first problem, the problem is a point moves along the path y is equal to x square by 3. So a point or an object it is moving along the path and uh, this motion, this motion equation of this motion is described as y equal to x square by 3. So y in terms of x that is given for us with a constant speed of 8 meter per second. So speed is given as constant speed. So that is the velocity 8 meter per second. What are x and y components of the velocity when x is equal to 3 meter? What is the acceleration when x is equal to 3 meter? So now we need to find the x and y components of velocity. So v cos theta and v sin theta. Also we need to find what is the acceleration when x is equal to 3 meter. So acceleration we know it is the square root of ax square plus ay square or an square plus at square etc. So now this is how we represent the movement of the, that is motion of the particle. See this is the, the, the uh, this is the curved path. This is the curved path. So the equation of this curved path is given by y equal to x square by 3. y equal to x square by 3. Now this is the velocity. At this point this is the velocity of the particle at this point velocity v and this velocity is resolved into x component as vx and in y component as vy. Now this is the slope of the slope of the direction slope of the curve that is this is dx and dy. Now we are given that v the velocity is 8 meter per second constant velocity velocity is constant along the path and that is equal to 8 meter per second. So at x is equal to 3 meter we know y is equal to x square by 3 and dy by dx we need theta 
because the components of velocity are v cos theta and v sin theta. Vx is equal to v cos theta and Vy is equal to v sin theta. So this component along the x direction is v cos theta and along the y direction is v sin theta. So we need theta for that we are differentiating y with respect to x. So dy by dx is equal to tan theta that is the slope. dy by dx is the slope. So it is tan theta that is equal to we are differentiating the y with respect to x. So we know y is equal to x square by 3. So dy by dx is equal to 2x by 3. And from this we get theta is equal to 63.43 degrees. Now we will find d square y by dx square. What is the reason for finding d square y by dx square? So now we know the velocity. Velocity is 8 meter per second, but it is not given as a function of time. So it is not possible to differentiate the velocity with respect to time to obtain the acceleration. So we have to go for the next coordinate. That is we will go for tangential and normal coordinates. We will try to represent this curve in terms of tangential and normal coordinate. That is the reason we are going for this d square y by d square x. So differentiate this we get 2 by 3. Okay. Now the components of velocity are vx is equal to v cos theta that is 3.75 meter per second substitute theta is equal to 63.43. And Vy is equal to V sin theta. Value of V is 8. Theta is 63.43. We get Vy is equal to 7.1554 meter per second. Now, see up to this we have completed. Now, the components of acceleration. We need to find the components of acceleration. That is, we are, see now it is not possible to represent it in rectangular coordinate. So we are going to represent it in normal and tangential ordinate. The formula for finding the normal ordinate of acceleration is an is equal to v square by r. v square by r. r is the radius of curvature. So we find the radius of curvature r is equal to 1 plus dy by dx the whole square the whole power 3 by 2 divided by d square y by d square x. So we substitute the value for dy by dx. dy by dx is 2x by 3. Value of x is 10 and substitute d square y by d square x is equal to 2 by 3. We get radius of curvature r is equal to 16.7705 meter. Now we can find the normal component of the acceleration. So this is what we have found. So the normal components of acceleration is v square by r. So substitute v square. v is 8. v square and the value for r we get normal acceleration is 3.8162 meter per second square. And at. What is tangential acceleration? The acceleration along the in the tangential direction that is acceleration in the direction of the curve. So at it is given as it is given in the question that the velocity is constant velocity is constant along the path along the curved path the velocity is constant. So if the velocity is constant along the curved path along the curved path the acceleration is equal to 0 that is tangential acceleration is equal to 0. So tangential component of the acceleration is equal to 0 when velocity is at constant. It is at constant speed. 
Therefore, we get A is equal to A n square plus A t square. Square root of square of the normal component of the acceleration plus tangential component of the acceleration. We get 3.8162 meter per second square because tangential component of acceleration is 0. We will go for the next problem. Okay. The problem is a particle moves along a path defined by y equal to 0.12 x square. That means there is a curved path and the equation of this curve is y. So y is equal to 0.12. 1, 2. Zero point one two x square. If the velocity and acceleration along the path are given as along the path. So, along the path the velocity is 5 meter per second and the acceleration is 3 meter per second square. That is nothing but the tangential acceleration. Along the path means it is tangential acceleration. When the particle is at the position x is equal to 10 meter, determine the normal component of acceleration at that instant. So, the same way the curve is represented as this is the curve that is y is equal to 0.12 x square, the velocity is resolved into horizontal and vertical components. So, Vx and Vy. Now, y is given as 0.12x square. Velocity is given as 5 meter per second. Acceleration is given as 3 meter per second square. And the distance, you are asked to find at the position x is equal to 10 meter, we are asked to find the normal acceleration. So, at x is equal to 10 meter, dy by dx is tan theta. That is dy is this, dx is this and this is theta. So, we get 0.24x dy by dx. We differentiate this dy, this y with respect to x. So, we get 0.24x and at x is equal to 10, substitute x is equal to 10, we get 2.4 and d square y by dx square is 0.24. Now, we will find the radius of curvature because we need to find the normal component of acceleration, normal component of acceleration. So, in order to find the normal component of acceleration, we are going to find this radius of curvature, radius of curvature for this curve. So, formula for radius of curvature is 1 plus dy by dx the whole square the whole power 3 by 2 divided by d square y by dx square. So, we get substitute the value for dy by dx at x is equal to 10 meter and d square y by dx square we get the value for radius of curvature as 73.2333 meter. Now, we can find the normal acceleration formula is v square by r substitute we get the value for normal component normal component of acceleration as 0 0.34137 meter per second square okay next problem is very simple that is the motion of a particle is described by x is equal to t square plus 8t plus 4 so x in terms of t x is given in terms of t time and y is also given as a function of time. We are required to find the initial velocity of the particle, velocity of the particle at t is equal to 2 seconds and acceleration of the particle at t is equal to 2 seconds. So, you can solve this easily. That is initial velocity for finding the initial velocity of the particle take t is equal to 0, time is equal to 0. 
So, at a time is equal to 0, find what is dx by dt and dy by dt. dx by dt is equal to vx. dy by dt is equal to vy. That is components of velocities in x and y direction. Now, velocity will be equal to square root of vx square plus vy square. So, your answer that is when t is equal to 0, the velocity is 11.3137 meter per second at the theta is equal to 45 degree. That is, see our velocity is given, we have, sorry, we have a curved path and the velocity of this curved path is this. Now, x is given and y is given. x component and x and y is given as a function of time. So, this will be vx and this component will be vy. And this is our velocity. So, find velocity v. dx by dt is vx. vx and dy by dt is vy. Now, theta is this angle is theta that is the velocity making with the horizontal is theta. So, now you can easily find theta. Same way when velocity when uh, time is equal to 2 second find what is the velocity and when time t is equal to 2 second find what is the acceleration. For acceleration you find dv by dt in both the direction x and y. Substitute we will be getting the answer. See I will tell you once again this dx is equal to dx by dt. So, Vx is equal to V cos theta. From that you can find theta. So, next problem. A motorist is travelling on a curved portion. So, again there is a curved portion of a highway of radius 200 meter. So, here R is given. Our radius, radius of curvature. That is radius is given. Radius is nothing but radius of curvature here. So, radius is 200 meter. It is given at a speed of 70 kilometers per hour. So, velocity is given. The brakes are suddenly applied causing a speed decrease at a rate of 2 meter per second square. You are applying a brake so that our speed is decreased to 2 meter per second square. That is deceleration. Acceleration is decreased. Speed is decreased. So, acceleration here will be taken as minus value, negative. It is decreased. Compute the acceleration of the motor immediately after the brakes have been applied and 3 seconds later. So, R is given already. So, how will we find this? Okay, you have remembered this. The normal and the tangential component when there is a curved path. So, radius of the highway R is given as 200 meter. Velocity is given as 70 kilometer per hour. We are converting it into meter per second. So, 70 into 1000 divided by 60 into 60. You get 19.455 meter per second. Then the acceleration that is tangential acceleration. What is given? Causing a speed decrease. So, it is moving in a curved path. When the brakes are applied on the curved path, the acceleration is decreased to 2 meter per second square. So, acceleration is 2 meter per acceleration. That is tangential acceleration along the path. See, along the path which it is traveling. That is your tangential acceleration is 2 meter per second square. And the normal acceleration is V square by R. We get a v, uh, v is 19.455 and R is 200. We get 1.890 meter per second square. Now, 
our acceleration immediately after the brake has been applied is a is equal to square root of a n square plus a t square. So we have found a n, a t is given as 2 meter per second square. Substitute, we get acceleration immediately after the brakes are applied as 2.752 meter per second square. Now, after 3 seconds, what is the acceleration? After 3 seconds, after the application of brake, what is the acceleration? So, velocity will be equal to initial velocity plus A into T, acceleration into time, that is velocity. See, acceleration is equal to velocity by time. So, velocity will be equal to acceleration multiplied by time. So, our velocity will be equal to initial velocity is 19.5. point. 455 plus acceleration it is the decreased acceleration so minus 2 into after th time 3 seconds so 3 we get our velocity after 3 seconds after the application of brake is 13.445 meter per second. Now the tangential acceleration is the same 2 meter per second square and the normal acceleration is v square by r so the velocity has been changed. Now the velocity is, uh, sorry, normal acceleration is 0 0.904. Here the velocity value for velocity is 13.445 meter per second. So we get the acceleration as 2.195 meter per second square. Last problem. The polar coordinates of a particle is, are given by r equal to 5 plus 7 t square and theta is equal to 6 plus 3 t square. Polar coordinates. We know the polar coordinates are in terms of radial distance and angular displacement. R is the radial distance and theta is the angular displacement. So, where R is in meters and theta is in radians and T is in seconds, determine the magnitude of velocity and acceleration of the particle when time T is equal to 5 seconds. See, we know the formula. What are what is the formula for of the polar coordinates for velocity and acceleration? So we will find dr. Uh, r is given, theta is given. We will find dr by dt, d square r by dt square, d theta by dt, d theta square by d square theta by dt square. We will substitute in the formula. We will be getting the answer. So we know. See, this is the angular displacement. And this is the radial distance. So we are finding from r, r dot that is dr by dt, differentiation of r with respect to t. This is differentiation of r with respect to t. Again, differentiation with respect to t. Now the angular displacement theta, differentiation of theta with respect to t. One more time you differentiate it with respect to t. Now the polar components of velocity are t is given as 5 seconds. We know the polar components that is the radial component is r dot. So it is 14 t and t is equal to 5 seconds. V r the radial component is 70 and v theta the angular displacement component, component of angular displacement is r multiplied by <coughs> theta dot. So we get 5400. So velocity is equal to square root of dr square plus v theta square. We get 5400.45 meter per second. Similarly, polar components for acceleration are r double dot that is d square r by dt square minus r into theta dot square. Substitute we get minus 161.98 meter per second square and a theta that is the angular displacement displacement coordinate. Angular displacement coordinate is 2 r dot theta dot plus r theta double dot. So acceleration is equal to square root of a r square plus a theta square. We get 162072 meter per second square. So that is all for today. Hope you all understood. So if you have doubts, you can ask me or comment on this section. 
Thank you. Thank you for listening.